Hey, today I'm excited to show you why uh, I think Phoenix Live View is uh, really awesome and uh, how I think we can really use it to um, you know, reduce some of the complexity that we typically have when building web applications. It's something I've been talking about a bunch in videos, but um, now I'm, I've been building my own app with it and uh, I've got it to a state um, where I think it's pretty exciting and I can show you kind of um, you know, what the benefits are what the code actually looks like, and then kind of show you uh, where I am and like what I think the next steps are to keep things simple. So, uh, you know, if you do any kind of web development or if you do JavaScript or like React, especially, I think this will be of interest to you. Um, I think where uh, Phoenix and Live View and Elixir are taking things is essentially allowing you to do uh, React style. Uh, programming, um, essentially just using an Elixir backend for all of it, and it's super fast. Um, my biggest concerns with all this stuff were speed, like making sure it felt snappy on the client side, and also making sure it really was kind of removing some com complexity of having to have a backend app and the front end app and all that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, without any further ado, I'll kind of give you a demonstration of this here real quick. So I'm going to switch over so you can see my uh, browser here in the background. And this is just my Elixir Phoenix app running. And uh, it's essentially just uh, kind of like a personal finance uh, calculator. Um, and it takes into account, uh, say the labels on these aren't necessarily greatest, but assets that you have, um, any like income or payments that you're receiving and budget items. And you can see here, it's just um, dumping out a graph. But what's really cool about this is the graph is rendered in JavaScript. Uh, and all of the forms and uh, event handling are, are more or less picked up automatically by Phoenix on the front end. There, there's some minor uh, setup that you have to do. And then uh, all the actual computation uh, is done on, in Elixir in the, back, in the back end. And then this just all happens over uh, WebSockets. And then I send the data back. Um, <clears throat> and instead of... Uh, well, I'll get into some of the details of it, but basically everything on the left is fully controlled by uh, Phoenix and will be re-rendered as needed. Uh, and then on the right, um, I, I, I covered this in another video, but um, instead of just fully re-rendering that view, I'm actually um, just updating it via um, some JavaScript interop. But you could fully re-render the view, it doesn't matter. But uh, so <laughs> what's cool about this is as I make changes, so let's say... I just, you know, whatever, say I bought some super expensive car. As soon as I press that, you can see this chart's getting re-rendered. And that's, um, you know, sending this information to the back end. It's regenerating all the data to compute this these data points or this data set for this line. Um, and it's actually computing everything, you know, for uh, also for the car and then for the total uh, of all these different things combined together. Um, and then that updates pretty much instantaneously. Like I can't, pr I can't see any lag. Like, and I'll just keep doing this. Blah 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 blah. You can see it's like super fast here. And if uh, if you're curious, you know, we could change uh, the percentages here so we could uh, say it, you know, depreciates super fast, like negative fifty percent. And you're gonna see it just falls off right away. It has no trouble doing this. Um, for for the sake of this demo, I've kept the list really short. But um, for my own. Uh, financial situation I've probably got like 30 or 40 items in there and the speed isn't any different um, in the past I've cranked this out it's like at the moment it's covering 120 data points so 10 years uh, monthly data for 10 years uh, I've cranked this out to like 50 or 100 years even and it handles it just fine um, I I'm curious though to crank it out to 100 years now and see if it's still uh, quite as snappy but when I did it last time it was uh, around one millisecond, which is faster than your eye can perceive. And yeah, I'm just super excited about this. Like this is so simple, you know, you can just go in here and make these changes. The graph gets updated instantaneously. And uh, once you kind of have the, the basic plumbing in place, like this code's really easy to understand. So I'm just gonna show you a quick snippet of it. So this is a, uh, this file here represents this view. It's the live view of the chart. And as we go through it, you'll see it's, um, there's like a lot of repeated stuff in here. So one of the reasons I'm making this video now is because I want to show you what a live view looks like. Um, and I'll talk about like how to evolve this to make it simpler. But um, essentially we're just pulling in all of the uh, 
dependencies. So these are all the different modules um, that I need uh, from my application. And you'll notice these are not part of a, the web application. So this is kind of cool. Like these are um, objects that are part of my business domain and the web uh, layer is really just a layer. It, it's not, all the stuff isn't like closely, you know, tied up with um, the fact that I do have like a web uh, UI. <clears throat> so isolating the business logic. And then here, uh, if you're familiar with like React, this will look really um, familiar to you, but you basically have a render function and then assigns and it and the view will just monitor those assigns and as they change it just automatically gets updated um, so for this view i have a list of assets a list of payments a list of budget items and then the chart the data for the chart and um, you'll see here i just have sections basically so um, for the assets this is just saying hey if you've got any assets here we're just going to iterate over those and dump out forms for each of those so they can be updated and you'll see it's really easy to do. Um, essentially, I can just reference any of these assets as like item and just dump out the, the value here. And that's really all you have to do. Uh, you do wanna make sure that um, the names here match up with the attributes because those will automatically get used um, by Phoenix. Um, and then it just repeats. So uh, we have assets, payments is basically the same thing. Budget items are uh, essentially the same, treated the same way. And then at the end, we've got the chart and the, the chart um, is treated a little bit differently, but um, it, I, I track the data for the chart on an HTML element. And then um, I have a, a JavaScript interop hook set up that knows to take that data and like update the actual chart here with it. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that because I have another video on it. If you're curious, uh, uh, I'll, there'll be a link to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way that the uh, component actually uh, gets registered is it has a mount. Um, and I mean, it's kind of similar to React. So essentially you just, um, uh, you know, we're tracking a socket here, like a web socket. And anything that we care about, we can just assign to that socket. So on the socket, I'm assigning assets, payments, budget items, and the chart. And then as any of, the, any of those things change, the view is going to get updated. Uh, and then if we go up here, you'll see when so there's this uh, Phoenix specific at, uh, HTML attribute on the form. Uh, and so whenever there's a change, so like key press or blur or whatever, uh, it's going to call out to this um, event. Uh, it's going to, yeah, make an event called update budget item. And then on the back end, that's just going to get picked up. Uh, let's just go down to where that one is. It's going to get picked up by handle event, but all of these are more or less handled the same way. So uh, in the Elixir side, or the Phoenix side, we're going to look for this event, update budget item. Um, you know, we can send in whatever we want to send in. So I'm uh, sending in the item, uh, and then we'll get the socket as well. And then basically, uh, this works just like a reducer would work um, in React or any other um, tool. So you essentially get a new version, generate a new version of uh, the socket and then uh, return that. So that's all the work here is just, um, you know, basically making a new uh, budget item based on the update, replacing it in the list of budget items, regenerating the chart, and then uh, sticking all that stuff back on the socket. And and this is all it takes to um, for this view to know uh, both to you know, update the list on the left and to also update the chart. Um, but one thing you are probably seeing in here is like there's a bunch of repetition. So, you know, I'm basically doing the same thing over and over for budget item, asset, and um, payments. So uh, that kind of leads into like where I'm gonna take this. So I, I wanted to show this as like a simple uh, live view uh, to start out with, but um, the direction all this stuff is heading and where I'm going to take this is actually doing um, a component setup that'd be more familiar to like what you would see if you've done React, where you really break out things into like small components that either are stateful or not stateful. Uh, and that lets you do things like um, instead of having this whole view care about like 
assets changing, um, I can have only the assets portion and only the chart care about those things changing. Um, and then uh, probably where I'll take it is, you know, basically have like a list component for assets and then an individual component for an asset for like the form um, and potentially, um, I don't know, there potentially may be some reuse across the different types of things. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of cool to see that's the direction the stuff's going. You can see it's pretty, it looks, you know, it's pretty easy to work with here. Um, and it's actually very close, I think, to React. This is pretty React inspired. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm going to be taking things. Uh, I, I think this was a good breaking point. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to break out the uh, live components here uh, relatively quickly and kind of show what those look like. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a little like quick, you know, status update on where I am. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And um, if you're interested in seeing more. Uh, videos on like Phoenix or LiveView or programming in general, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the little notifications bell to get notified when new videos come out, uh, and then hit the like button, really helps me out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.